Hey guys, welcome to NASACast, a podcast on everything science. Today's special guests are Alex, Alyssa, Raul, and Sadashi. Let's pass the mic to them. Hey everyone, how are you guys? Good, good, pretty good. Today we will be talking about the need for new evidence in order to test existing theories about the composition and origin of our solar system. We will also be talking about the need of funding for space exploration. So why don't I start today's podcast since you guys always start? Ugh, fine. Take it away. There has been a lot of interest in the need to find new evidence to test existing theories about the composition and origin of our solar system. Sounds pretty interesting. Can you tell us a bit about it? I think if we have new evidence, it will confirm astronomical theories that have really developed our perceptions of global science. For example, the Big Bang Theory. Starting billions of years ago, there was this ball of infinite density and intense heat called a singularity. And that ball acted as a single point that gravity contracted to, which expanded to form the entire universe. And it's theories like these that have shaped our understanding of the universe and its limits. Yeah, all those theories are super neat. But how can we progress from there? I think innovations and discoveries will be conducted as a result of building off of this past comprehension and theoretical knowledge. This will drive a further expansion of scientific understanding that can help us create cutting-edge technology that will hopefully be able to solve global problems such as climate change and overpopulation. Wow, that sounds very cool, Alex. But there's always been this question that I've wondered, and it's how did the universe start with the formation of elements and everything? So the universe started with the Big Bang, and immediately after this occurred, cosmic inflation began, which is a theory that could potentially explain what propelled the gigantic expansion of the Big Bang. Cosmic inflation? That sounds pretty fancy. Yeah, it really is. The immense amount of energy emitted from the Big Bang was sufficient to produce a repulsive gravity, which created a layer of negative pressure in space to accelerate the expansion at a greater speed than even light itself. But what about the formation and the composition of chemical elements? So, after the Big Bang, all the matter in the universe was composed of mainly hydrogen, helium, and electrons. And from there, the periodic table that we know today would emerge in our search for elements. You might be wondering, how the heck did scientists study the chemical composition of celestial bodies? I know, how do we know so much about things that are so far away? Well. They use spectroscopy. I know what you might be thinking. Wow, Seb, that's such a big word for your brain. Well, it's actually super simple. Scientists use instruments that spread out light from an object by wavelength. And that is called the spectrum. Every single element has a different fingerprint. Scientists can look at the spectrum for specific fingerprints and determine what the object is made from. As you guys know, every atom has electrons and they like to stay in the lowest energy level. But when photons carrying electrons hit the atoms, they can boost the energy levels. The atoms absorb the light at specific wavelengths, but then... The electrons protest and go back to their original energy levels. When they emit the energy, they release photons with exactly the same wavelengths of light that were absorbed in the first place. This will correlate back to the spectrum and the scientists will see a line in a specific wavelength. Consequently, they will be able to determine which elements are in the objects. That is so cool! We'll be back to learn about a few space projects done by the Canadian Space Agency. And we're back! Well, you folks may be wondering about Canada's own space agency, right? Well, they have a few projects of their own, and by a few, (laughs) I mean nine. (laughs) Why don't I say all of them? The first one is the Canadian Food and ISS, then effects on noise on human performance, testing effectiveness of G-suits, effects of space flight on veins, measuring radiation with bubble detonators, preventing decomposition sickness, radiation projects, monitoring and maintaining performance, And lastly, but not least, MOSFET Radiation Monitoring System. Wow, that sure is a lot of projects. Yeah, it is. But what I want to know is why is radiation the topic of so many of these projects and what even is it? Well, you folks have gone to the right place. 
Radiation is energy that comes from a source and travels through space at the speed of light. This energy has an electric and magnetic field associated with it. Radiation detectors or dosimeters are used to measure the radiation levels that astronauts are exposed to in space. It can be super duper dangerous to people and make them super duper sick. Just like our super sick brains. So what about the project on measuring radiation with bubble detectors? What is that all about? I can't really seem to wrap my head around it. Well, a bubble detector is a radiation sensor that can be used to measure neutron levels. Neutrons make up 30% of the radiation that astronauts are exposed to in space. Whoa, I never knew neutrons were in space. Alex, you know this. Neutrons are all around us. They're matter for God's sake. Oh yeah, sorry, I forgot about that. Oops. Mm-hmm, yeah. We've already talked about bubble detectors, but what are most fed dosimeters? Yes, Seb, what are they? I was just getting to the point, Alex. You didn't need to cut me off. Anyways, the most fed dosimeter is a military silicon device that measures radiation. When radiation hits the sensor, electrical charges are created, thereby changing the voltage of the device. They can be used to estimate the amount of radiation received by the skin, eyes, and blood-forming organs. Whoa, so cool! Well, that's it for this part of the podcast. We'll be back after a short lunch break for us, which will last one hour on our side of things, but only three seconds for you guys. See you then! One hour later. Hey, we're back! This time, it is me and Alyssa. Raul, quick question. Do you think we should put funding into space exploration? Yeah, I do. There are so many reasons why. As you guys know, climate change is having an effect on all parts of the world. Summers are getting hotter and there can be detrimental droughts. 2020 was one of the hottest years ever. Eventually, the Earth is going to become uninhabitable. Funding space explorations will allow us to explore and find other places to live so that when the Earth explodes or gets too hot for us to live in, we will have places to go. Recently, using the Kepler Space Telescope, scientists predicted that there could be as many as 300 million livable planets in our galaxy. That is pretty amazing. Yeah, it is. And if we increase the funding, we will be able to find ways to get there even faster. You know, this can also help people. Adding more funding will increase job opportunities, which can have a positive effect on the world. Recently, many people lost their jobs to COVID. So with proper education, this could allow a steady income and more opportunities for youth. We can also understand more about space and our medical conditions on Earth. Space experiments have helped us find things that can help with cardiovascular disorders, type 2 diabetes, osteoporosis, and balance problems. You listeners out there might be thinking, what, what, what about the people? What if a rocket comes and crashes on my house? Well, with more funding, that will become less likely because there will be more research and scientists to help better calculate ways to take off and land. Oh my god! Aliens! Good thing we have funding. Yeah, if it wasn't for that funding, we'd be dead right now. We are Kai Era Connie. We are not here to kill you. We are here to take you to Chocolate Mountain. Well, it looks like we have to go for now. But we will see you in the next episode of... NASACast. 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 Bye-bye.